Hello everybody, I am the Black Sigma, or you could just call me Eric, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Justice for All. And something seems a little off here, doesn't it? Maybe. It's my eyes. Yeah, I got contacts for the cosplay, though honestly they should probably be a darker shade of grey. Otherwise, I think they're fairly accurate. So now there's that. Anyway, back to the game you came here for. Huh, huh, huh. I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? Uh, is there... The bellboy was empty-handed. Or should I say empty... hand -ed. I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh uh, yeah, I almost forgot. Huh? Wh what? That bellboy, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? No, if I don't put the gravel into the judge's voice, it doesn't sound right. But also, if I put too much gravel in it, I'm going to damage my vocal cords. I actually was feeling pretty bad about my voice this morning. S sorry, it slipped my mind. Uh, boy, does this bellboy look really suspicious. Gotta focus. Can't lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright, the bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So? Uh, football is made of leather? Are you saying all football <laughs> footballs are suspicious because they're made of leather? After the whole stitches thing? But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Ugh. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Okay. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room, then the old guy just left, without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom, and then back to my seat. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room? Yeah, I kinda saw all that by accident. Some accident? I'd say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Y yes your honor Ugh. I don't feel so good. Maya's life is on the line. But... But I'm hiding the truth, I... <sighs> he went on, knocked on Matt's door. Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? Uh, excuse me, I may be a poor underpaid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spying. So what was your point at looking at them? He, he looked from the door of the bathroom with his left eye in sort of sneaky spy-like fashion. 
please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. He gave something to the person inside the room. I said hold it. Um, okay. That's better. Ahem. <clears throat> what kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Um, okay. Should probably ask him only one question at a time. He gave something to this person? Yeah. And what was this something? Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, if I remembered what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something, would I? But this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kinda small. This is an incredibly crucial piece of information. Please try to remember what it was. Um, I'll try. In the meantime, let's talk of another point, namely what the bellboy did next. Ah, uh, we should probably ask him his other questions. Yeah, hold it. And... So, who took this something the bellboy handed off? I don't know. What do you mean? Only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? Then you're saying you didn't see their face? Yeah. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is this really all that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy handed off. Um, well, let's see. I think it was... No. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Hmm. If I saw it again, I could say for sure, but I think it was some sort of wooden statue? There's... no way, right? It wouldn't happen to be... this? What was the point of that pregnant pause? After all, Phoenix, if we're gay, neither of us are getting pregnant. I mean... Uh, pregnant as in the pause was long. Obviously. Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh, it was me, Your Honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Y yes Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix. Deep breath. <sighs> this is probably how Edgeworth felt when he first made an objection against his own witness. Mr. Powers, the something you saw, was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That's the something. Well, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. Hmm. I recall we found this at Matt on Guard's mansion. The, the defendant's house? Uh-oh. What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelley DeKiller assassinated Juan Corrida in his room. 
and then stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then, the bear being found at Mr. On Guard's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt On Guard is the killer's client. Uh-oh. Order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, this is a most unfortunate series of events for you. I know it said turn of events, but I wanted to reference Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. Yeah, I, I got the reference, Your Honor. Sorry, Mia. No, it's alright. Your judgement was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would've. Ah, I almost forgot that he knew about it too. Hmm, I think it is clear that there is no need for us to continue this trial. Uh, 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 nope, nope, objection, your honor, your, your, your honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright. There are still a few points left that we've not fully explained. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? Uh, 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 something's up with this bear, Your Honor? I mean, I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear, Mr. Wright. This was found at Mr. On Guard's mansion. However, Mr. On Guard was arrested at the hotel that night. Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh. I think Your Honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that it was Mr. On Guard who took this bear to his mansion. Whew. Yeah, I'm glad I figured that one out and totally wasn't winging it on the fact that the bear had a bunch of cuts in it. No, no, it was definitely, uh, the thing Phoenix said. Totally. Definitely my intention. W why that's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Whew, disaster averted, it see. Hmm. You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright, huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at On Guard's mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler. All the time. He was the killer. The killer and On Guard were working together, so to speak, and the killer was hiding at On Guard Mansion as its butler. W what a bold move! The bear figurine was brought back to On Guard Mansion by the killer himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, On Guard had him do so. I assume it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I have to try. I have to find something else. What will you do, Mr. Now, Mr. Wright? Do you plan to? I plan to explore, uh, expose a clearly shaky place in Mr. Power's testimony. W what? There is still another one. There is indeed, Your Honor, and it's quite a questionable point. What are you trying to pull? 
Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? The person who received the bear, Your Honor. There was one thing in Mr. Powers' testimony that was very unclear, and that is the identity of the person who received the bear. Gave something to the person inside the room, only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear, we can't be sure of- Ah! Uh, what? Huh? Hmm? Huh? Wh what is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry. Actually, so, I remembered, um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm, but, but the arm... It was the Nickel Samurai's arm, I swear it. You've got to be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. Hmm. Order, order. Looks like you've dug your own grave, yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So the person who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And, as we all know, Matt on guard is the Nickel Samurai. Thanks to the defense, we've made that all the clearer. I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion, as well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Matt on guard. I see no reason for this trial to continue. Therefore, I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, your honor, for understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? Your Honor, the defense believes that your verdict would be correct. However, what Edgeworth said about the truth, there's one more thing we need to bring to light. I will now announce my... There is only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at the On Guard Mansion. However, it's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. You know what, this isn't where I was going with this, Phoenix. I thought we were gonna tell the truth about the whole ransom situation. What are you saying? What I am saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. The real client? Yes. Tisk tisk, is this all you have? Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the killer's real client and therefore the real murderer? I have to. 
I'm sorry, Adrian. Adrian Andrews. Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt on guard for the crime. By wearing a spare nickel samurai costume. Ah. Oh. Then, then the nickel samurai's arm that I saw. That could have very well been Ms. Andrews. But what about Mr. On Guard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figurine at Mr. On Guard's mansion was a well-laid trap set by Ms. Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Hmm. What is with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell On Guard did it. I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin guilt on someone else. Yeah, unbelievable, it's not something petty, it's murder. Is this to save Maya? Is this to save Maya? Even if the whole world turns against me, this is the one fight I can't give up on. Order, order, order. All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor, for the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it strange and wondered, why would the criminal want this wo little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specially bring that bear to on guard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Ms. Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Ms. Adrian Andrews herself. I see. Well then, the court will take a short ten minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought that in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt onto Adrian. Swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick? P Pearls? Where's Mia? I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. Really strong power? Maya? I assume. But a call? I didn't have it in my jacket pocket this time. Oh, Mr. Nick, your phone is. It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Y yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to latch onto. Huh, <sighs> that's good, pal. And what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where the killer and Maya are? Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but. What? We don't have any more time! If we just had one, even a single clue, it'd be really helpful. It was 
was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself, I've got to keep the trial going until Maya's been rescued. But if I just run out of luck this time, is all our hope for naught? A tent! Huh? A tent? I- I could see a circus tent. Oh! Mia, you're back! Oh, Maya called you and you really quickly- uh, uh, Mia! It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As, as soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I could see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. Gumshoe. Is there a circus in town right now? There's only one, pal. The very big circus. Maya's someone within a 300 foot radius of the main tent. W what Okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map, about a 300 foot radius from the main tent, hurry! And... and... I could see a mailbox under the window, just outside. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. Hmm, okay, what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. I felt like I was in an old office building? Maybe the third floor or so? I heard her, an old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Mia. Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Come through, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. Court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From one, from this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Ms. Andrews? Of course I have. You've seen it before. That's right. It's only natural that the witness has. Ms. Andrews, could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secrets? Alright. Why... Why does she... Hmm... Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. At its center is a small cavity, with just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. So this figurine, it's a container of sorts, is it? Yes. Looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is superb craftsmanship. 
Oh yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Looks like there really was something to that bear after all. And we'll figure out what exactly it is in the next episode. Bye.